Hello everyone, I am Zach Peterson here on the show floor at PCB West 2025 and I am joined by Tomide Adesami. Tomide. Good to see you again, Zach. Good to see you, man. I feel like it's like every conference we're like running into each other. So yeah, every it, single one. It's good to finally get you in the hot seat to talk a little bit about Circuit Mind. Glad to be here. So if you could just briefly uh, give our listeners and our viewers a quick intro mm -hmm. as to what is Circuit Mind. Yeah, so Circuit Mind, by the way, um, I used to be an engineer. I'm Tomide, I'm the CEO of Circuit Mind. So, Circuit Mind develops AI and automation solutions for electronics engineering. Specifically, the Circuit Mind platform today helps engineers go from a block diagram to a schematic bill of materials and other analysis like power analysis, derating analysis in minutes and then export into your design tool and then take it from there. That's the kind of short version. That's the high level view. The high level view, yes. Okay, okay. So basically in order to get started, somebody needs to just kind of build their block diagram inside CircuitMind. CircuitMind automatically goes through, creates all the circuitry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, so today you're probably doing a design, a block diagram in Visio. You know, sure, you get your sure. requirements, you, you do it in Excel or Word, then convert this to an architecture in Visio to kind of get the architecture right. And then you start looking for components, creating a schematic in Altium, et cetera. Instead of doing that, you can just create that same block diagram you do in Visio in the CircuitMind platform with a drag and drop interface. You can specify constraints on those blocks in your block diagram, like the memory size of a flash memory. The sure you know, the gas detected on a, cab or, uh, on a gas sensor or even a specific part number if you want. Click a button and the platform will then go find components and generate the fully functional schematic design for you. So how flexible can you be with your constraints in terms of like what you can define in a block diagram? Yeah. Like for, for example, like yeah. with power, let's yeah. say, right? Yeah. You know, power, you can define some, some features like it has to have soft start, has to have maybe zero voltage switching, that, that yeah. kind of thing. How, how granular can you really get? Like the goal for this is that you should be able to specify anything that you want, right? Okay. Now, there's some things that at the very beginning of when I started CircuitMind, there were some things where we just wanted to decide everything for you because we, you know, we wanted that to be part of the optimization. But well, after working with a lot of like electronic engineers, even though some things are derived requirements, like some of the things that you mentioned, like the voltage on a block and so on, I think those can be derived and it can be derived in the platform, but we just allow you to specify it as well. Sure, sure. Right? Um, and so if you want to specify, you specify it. If you don't want to specify, you don't specify it. You specify sense. switching frequency, the you know, number of regulators in a package, all these things you can specify on each block. So I think with, with that kind of approach to circuit generation, let's call it, mm -hmm. um, maybe you get conflicting requirements, maybe you get one or two requirements that are infeasible. Yes. Does that ever happen? And, and how does a platform like this handle that? Because it's different. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just want to say it's different from like a circuit reuse perspective. Yes. Because a circuit reuse perspective, like some of those constraints are built in. And you yeah. can't really change it. Exactly, exactly. And that's kind of what we were going for. So it's a, it's a great question. So. Let's, let's look at this. The CircuitMind platform is essentially a big, big optimi circuit optimization program. You have this database of, um, of components, um, and then we auto -gener automatically generate designs from there. But we're looking at trillions and trillions of potential design options, mm -hmm. narrowing down to the feasible ones, and then choosing one from those feasible ones. So the question is, how do we choose the one that we present to you in the end? So, the co the, so we have these sliders, which are about optimizing for size, cost, power, etc. We will kind of um, choose one option in in the, for a run. But the goal is that you should be generating maybe ten different options sure. or twenty different options, and then choosing. And then infeasibility happens all the time for us because we're very strict. This yeah. has to be a functional design. Right. So we're solving a whole bunch of design rules. Um, and if we f if we can't find a circuit that meets just one rule, like one rule is disobeyed, it will be an infeasible result. So it's very strict um, in you know, the generation. Sure, sure. And then that gets flagged to the user. Correct, and, and correct. Okay. So, so it's a relax. very iterative process. Right. So this they, is, they can relax some constraints if exactly. they need to. Eventually, they pull out one or two feasible designs. Correct, correct. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. Correct. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so how has the platform evolved over time? What, how have the features changed? Yeah. So, um, there are a few ways, um, like I think about how this platform evolves over time. It's like in the base, in some basic sort of like um, criteria that we, we care about. The first one is um, design coverage. How okay. much of your design coverage? Because this is a tool for engineers r right now, right? This is not some a tool that like a maker can do a design. No, it's like a real electronic that can do a design. So we want to be able to do the part of the design that we can do very, very well. Right, so right. when we first started, we really focused on, let's say you have a full circuit, we will do the digital portions. We won't do your amplifiers, we won't do your regulator, we won't do your comparator, we won't do all these sort of things. We do the digital parts, we'll match interfaces, add the pull-ups, pull-downs, decoupling, all of these things, level translators and so on. So that's how we started. We launched that last year. This year, we launched power. So we, we weren't able to do your regulator design before, but in about February, March this year, we were, we were now able to do your regulator design. We'll do your full power tree. We'll kind of show you efficiency curves. You know, switching frequencies, we'll choose those. Okay. We'll choose your feedback resistor values, all of that stuff. We'll choose. And I, I swear to God, this is my favorite part of the platform. So yeah. design coverage is one of the bits. Another bit is like, um, how much output are you giving? So a lot of people will say, okay, I can generate a schematic. But many times the schematic is not like the long pull in the, in the tent, right? So we'll generate schem schematics bombs, your derating analysis, your FMEAs, your interface control documents, your power analysis documents, etc. So we can, with a specific design coverage, extend the number of things we can do. And this is another thing that is kind of really valuable. And then there's other things that we have to do now, which is like the enterprise features. Can I use your own libraries to generate, to d draw the schematics? Mm -hmm. So I use your library of symbols and footprints. Sure, Can I sure. use your own company's preferred parts, your own company's procurement? We're doing many of those things now because we work with enterprises. Makes sense, makes sense. So then ultimately the output is a schematic. You can then put that through your internal review process. Maybe sure. you can combine it with some existing schematics you already have. Yeah. And then you've now got a full project. You basically cut down, I don't know, 75% of the time, exactly. let's say. Exactly. Depending on what you're doing, maybe as long as you're doing more than 50% of time, that time to kind of a good schematic, then this is really, really valuable for you. Um, we One thing to just kind of make sure for the engineers to know is that we know that there's a lot of reuse as well. So you can do reuse in the platform. Same block diagram, some blocks can be design generation, some can be reuse blocks. That's one thing I was yeah. gonna ask, is yeah. how do you work in design? Exactly, yeah. so there are reuse blocks in there. You can just kind of import your reuse blocks and reuse them in future designs. And it's very helpful for like a company with like a thousand engineers all over the world. Now they can have access to each other's reuse blocks in this block diagram format and kind of Ex, um, explore. There are even some companies we're working with where their only use case is reuse, but it's just a better way to reuse because now you're creating architectures, you're optimizing over reuse blocks and, and so on. Um, yeah, and then the other thing to mention is just that you will still need to do some parts of the design. It's not oh, sure. be all, end all, you, you can take this schematic over. It will be functional, but you have to robustify the design. We don't do the RF parts of your design yet. We don't do the analog parts of your design. We do analog power, but beyond power, we don't do it yet. So there'll be things for you to do. You will change the value of some pull-ups or some caps because of signal integrity, things like this. You still sure. need a professional engineer to kind of robustify a design or align it with a specific application and so on, yeah. So then what about like various levels of, re of reliability, right? The, re the reason I ask is like, for example, you know, throw away consumer electronics, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, whatever the cheapest part is, right? Yeah, yeah, Use yeah, it, yeah, right? yeah. But if we're talking, you know, automotive, mm -hmm. aerospace, yeah. right? I mean, the parts have to have specific yeah, uh, ACL, compliance, Yeah, right? ACL, compliance, yeah. all these things. Exactly. Yeah, so in the platform, there, this, there's this idea of what we call global constraints. Constraints okay. that apply to everything. I want something in a certain temperature range. I want something to be... Uh, this um, thing to be AECQ qualified. Sure. I want this to be ACL, this mic processor to be ACL D, you know, functional safety level, etc. You can do all of that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. But, but sorry, the, uh, just to clarify, you can oh, yeah. select components based on compliance, but it's still going to struggle to do circuits that, that, um, 
that help a, a, d a design to meet a certain compliance. So, I, I understand uh, you what know, you're saying, so, right? so you still need to be either an architect, if we can yeah. auto-generate that, you architect the circuits correctly right. for that, yeah. or add some additional circuitry afterwards if we don't auto-generate. Sure, sure. So an example would be like, for example, for like a surge testing requirement for like mill standard. Correct. Right. You would need you, to add the circuit protection yourself. You, we, we, in some cases we can do circuit protection. You okay. just need to specify okay. that circuit sure, protection. Sure, sure, sure. But if, if we can't do it automatically, then you, you know, some examples like EMC protection, we can't do automatically right now. You'll need to add that yourself. Right. But you still need to be the architect saying, oh, well, you know, Mill standard avionics use case, you need two parallel lanes. That's not a, yeah. you know, that's not a requirement that it's not going to auto generate that. Sure, You're just sure. Gonna, but oh, I need monitoring or something. Even, even so, right? If you get the design 70% of the way there, Correct. I mean, that's, that's still a big time saver. And I guess it lets you focus on the really important things like high reliability or like maybe design to cost, or may, maybe some aspects of design reuse, exactly. or some of the other things like analog, which are really sensitive. Exactly. Yeah, so you That's can spend the whole time idea. making that great. Perfectly articulated. Awesome. <laughs> so if anyone's interested in learning about CircuitMind, what do they need to do? Where do they go? Yeah, so they, you go to www.circuitmind.io, um, request access, request to see a demo, that'll come straight to our team. I will, we'll, we'll run you through the gamut. We'll try to understand your process and how this is going to fit into your workflow. And, you know, we'll take it from there. All right. Sounds great. Tamide, thank you, thank you much, so Zach. much for finally <laughs> getting in the hot seat with me here. If you're out there watching or listening right now, make sure to hit the subscribe button. You'll be able to keep up with all of our episodes from the PCB West 2025 show floor. We'll see you next time, folks.